the display devices, we are having the many display devices, we are starting from the cathode ray tube that is oscilloscope that we always use in our laboratories for getting the output through the any electronic device or electronic circuit. So, what is this CRT? CRT is the cathode ray tube which is the heart of the CRO cathode ray oscilloscope. It is used to emit the electrons required to strike the phosphor screen to produce the spot for the visual display of the signal. Through this, uh, um, this electron beam we can get the desired output. So, uh, so it is having the various part. You see on the screen that we are having the block diagram of the simple oscilloscope that consists of the cathode ray tube where we are having the electron gun as well as we are having the vertical as well as the horizontal voltage which uh, arrange the flow of the electron beam moving towards the fluorescent screen. Apart from that we are having a trigger circuit, vertical amplifier, we are having a display line and moreover we are having the trigger circuit, time based generator, horizontal amplifier that is used and after that we are having a high voltage and low voltage and this is the block diagram of the simple oscilloscope. So, CRT as we discussed that it is a cathode ray tube which emits the electron required to strike the phosphor screen to produce the spot for the visual display of the signal through the electronic circuit. Next part is the vertical amplifier. What is the purpose of this vertical amplifier? Input signal which is not generally strong. So, provide the measurable deflection on the screen. Through this vertical amplifier, we get the strong signal or we can amplify the signal, uh, the input signal which you are getting so that we can get the uh, amplified output. The amplifier stage is used for generally wide band amplifier so as to pass faithfully the entire band of the frequency to be measured. Next is the similarly we contain the attenuator stages as well. This attenuator are used when very high voltage signals are to be examined. So, to bring the signals within the proper range of the operation, you see in the diagram that here we are having a input attenuator that is connected with the uh, amplifier that is uh, the inverter which you are using, phase inverter we are having and uh, right hand side we are having the drive amplifier. So, in the left hand side that is a FET input amplifier and the right side we are having the main amplifier that will produce the that is amplify the vertical amplifier. This FET is used this, this, this we are having in the vertical amplifier. We use the FET amplifier and this is the main amplifier. So, these both the amplifier amplifies the signal input output and that will give the that is the output amplifier which gives the output and uh, this uh, signal um, just uh, go into the uh, phosphorus fluorescent screen. Now, it consists of the several stages with the overall fixed uh, sensitivity. So, the amplifier can be designed for stability and required bandwidth very easily due to the fixed gain. The input stage color of the attenuators followed by the FET source follower. So, this amplifier attenuator we use to get the output signal. It is followed by the BJT emitted follower to the match the output impedance of the FET output with input or the phase inverter means with the phase inverter we are having the main inverter that is in the form of the uh, this in this FET we are having the phase inverter, then this uh, output go in the BGT that is the main inverter. The phase inverter provides the two anti phase output signal which are required to operate the push pull output amplifier. So, the push pull operation has advantages like better hum voltage cancellation, even harmonic. Uh, suppression especially large second harmonic greater power output per tube and reduce number of the defocusing and the nonlinear effects. 
Another important point is the delay time in the CRT. This delay line is used to delay the signal for the some time in the vertical section. When the delay line is not used the part of the signal gets lost. So, for this de delay line uh, it will delay the signal for the some time. So, thus the input signal is not applied directly to the vertical plate, but it pass through the delayed by some time using a delay line circuit as you have seen in the diagram that input signal pre amplifier then we are having a main amplifier after that we use the delay signal through delay signal and this is the delay delayed signal delay line then the signal is delay then it is pass in the uh, pass into the uh, screen pass onto the screen. So, sweep generator is there. So, any loss will be calculated. So, input signal not directly sent to the output, but here we using the delay line also to amplify the after amplifying the final signal. So, the trigger phase the trigger pulse is picked off at the time t is equal to t naught. After the signal has passed through the main amplifier, then signal is delayed by the x 1 nanoseconds while sweep takes the wind 1 y 1 nanoseconds to reach. So, uh, we just we delay the signal for a very short time that is in the form of the nanosecond. So, the design of the delay line is such that the delay line x 1 is higher than that of the y 1 that is generally x 1 is 200 nanosecond while uh, another is the 80 nanosecond. So, there is a sweep starts well in the time and no part of the signal is lost. So, there are two types of the delay line we use in the CRO. First is the lumped parameter delay line, second is the distributed parameter delay line. So, we use the these two uh, delay line. First is the lumped uh, parameter delay line and second the distributed parallel line. So, another uh, uh, we use another uh, part in the CRT we use the trigger circuit. What is this? This is necessary that the horizontal deflection start at the same point of the input vertical signal each time it sweeps. Hence, to synchronize the horizontal deflection with the vertical deflection is synchronizing or the triggering circuit is used. So, for synchronization of the uh, input signal in the vertical as well as in the horizontal, so synchronization is very important. It converts the this trigger circuit converts the incoming signal into the triggering pulses which are used for the synchronization. So, for the synchronization we use the trigger circuit. Another uh, part is the time based generator. This the time based generator is used to generate the star tooth voltage and uh, required to deflect, deflect the beam in the horizontal section. So, this voltage, this voltage and uh, we use this voltage and which helps display the analysis. So, this voltage deflect the spot at the constant this time at the constant time dependent rate and uh, thus the x axis on the screen can be represented as time which helps to display and analyze the time varying signal. So, this is the very important part which is a time based generator which is used to generate the sawtooth voltage required to deflection of the beam in the horizontal section. This voltage deflects the spot at a constant time dependent rate. So, thus the x axis on the screen can be represented as a time which helps to display and analyzes the time varying signal that is along the x axis. So, uh, this we use uh, for the uh, di display of the signal on a particular point. So, another part is the dual beam oscilloscope. Another method of studying the two voltage simultaneously, we use the 
dual beam oscilloscope. So, another method of studying two voltage simultaneously on the screen is to special cathode ray tube having the two separate electron gun generating, generating the two separate beam each electron beam has its own vertical deflection plate means we can get the two out two uh, beam two output at the same time or we can use the two beam by using the dual beam oscilloscope where in this oscilloscope each electron beam had has its own vertical deflection plate but the two beams are deflected horizontally by the common set of the horizontal plate the difference is that where we are having the different vertical plates but the common horizontal plates. The time based circuit may be same or the different. Such an oscilloscope is called the dual beam oscilloscope. So, on the screen you are seeing that this is the dual uh, beam oscilloscope. The similarly it is working we are having the two different vertical plate but the single horizontal plate the same horizontal plate will work and it is underwater. So, oscilloscope has a two vertical deflection plates the two separate channels A and B for E for the two separate input signal. So, the you see here A and B these are the two separate channels. So, each channel consists of the preamplifier and uh, an attenuator. So, a delay time main vertical amplifier and a set of the vertical deflection plates together form a single channel. So, there is a single set of horizontal plate and the single time based circuit. So, the sweep generator drives the horizontal amplifier which in turn drives the plate. So, the horizontal plates sweep both the beam across the screen at the same time. So, these horizontal plates sweep the sweep both the beams across the screen at the same time and these two uh, spot we are getting on the uh, on the fluorescent screen. So, sweep generator can be triggered internally by the channel A or the by the channel B signal. So, similarly it can also be triggered from an external signal or the line frequency signal. So, this is possible with the help of trigger selector switch that a front panel control means similarly uh, it can also be triggered from an external or the line frequency signal can enter in this uh, CRT and this is possible with the help of trigger selector switch. You see in the oscilloscope there is a trigger selector switch where we can attach the external uh, signal to the oscilloscope. So, a front panel control uh, which is having the trigger selector switch. So, such a oscilloscope may have the separate time based circuit for the separate channel. So, this allows the different sweep rates for the two channel, but increases the size and the weight of the oscilloscope. You see here this is the basically where we are trigger uh, from the uh, external signal uh, signal to in the oscilloscope to get the desired output. So, here you see we are having the vertical and horizontal these all are the different. So, these are the we are having the multiple output signal also multiple uh, beam output oscilloscope we also have that we will discuss later. First we discuss the electroluminescence which is a one of the display devices which is the optical and having the electrical electrical phenomena to display the signal. So, electroluminescence is the optical and the electrical phenomena in which a material emit lights in response to the passage of the electric current or to strong electric field and this type of device is used for the getting the output to the electronic circuit. So, this is the distinct from the black body light emission resulting 
from the heat uh, resulting from the heat chemical reaction and in the liquid uh, sound or other mechanical actions or the organic electroluminescence we can use. So, electroluminescence is the result of radiative recombination of the electron of the electrons and holes in the material usually a semiconductor. So, the excited electrons releases their energy as the photon light and that photon light on the screen display the output. So, electroluminescence is a result of the radiative recombination of the electron and holes in the material and that is made of the semiconductor and that excited electrons release the light and this light display the results. So, prior to recombination electrons and holes may be separated either by doping the material to form the p n junction as in case of the semiconductors and in the semiconductor luminescent devices such as light emitting diodes or through the excitation by impact of high energy electrons accelerated by a strong electric field with the phosphor on the photo electroluminescent displays. So, it has recently shown as a solar cell improves to light to electricity efficiency that improves that improve the open circuit voltage in case of the solar cell and it is also improved the electricity to the light that is EL efficiency. So, photo electroluminescent technologies have a low power consumption as compared to the competing lighting technologies such as neon fluorescent lamp. So, this together with the thinness of the material has made EL technology valuable to advertising industries. So, electroluminous technologies who use for the display. Relevant advertising application including the electroluminescent uh, billboard and the signs we use by using this uh, electroluminescent. So, EL manufacturers can control precisely which area of an electroluminescent sheet illuminates and when and uh, it means the control can be done through the circuit. So, this uh, has given the advertisers the ability to create the more dynamic advertising and is still compatible with the traditional advertising spaces. Most of the time light is used. So, EL films is so called uh, lambreton radiator unlike the neon lamps and uh, these use the lambreton radiator filament lamps uh, and LED uh, apart from that this EL films are more, uh, more uh, these, these film are more illuminated as compared to the neon lamps, LED and filament lamps. The brightness of the surface appears the same from all the angles of the view. Electroluminous light is not the directional. So, the light emitted from the surface is perfectly homogeneous and is well and well perceived by the eye. So, EL films produces the single frequency that is light like the laser light it produces the monochromatic light and has a very narrow bandwidth. So, it is uniform and it is a uniform and visible for uh, from a great distance. So, EL film are mostly used for the long distances. In principle, EL lamps can be made in any color like however, the commonly used greenish color closely matches the peak sensitivity or of the human vision. So, producing the greatest apparent light output for the least electrical power input unlike neon and the fluorescent lamp. So, these EL lamps are not negative resistance devices. So, no extra circuitry is needed to regulate the amount of current flowing through them. This is a new technology uh, 
uh, and in new technologies uh, uh, is used based on the multispectral phosphors that uh, emit light from 600 to 400 nanometer that is in the range of the visible light depending on the drive frequency and this is similar to the color changing effect seen with the aqua EL sheet but on a large scale. So, we can use this EL lamps in many devices and for the displaying you are seeing on the screen that this is the this is the EL devices that the luminescence is brighter as compared to the neon. Moreover, the, what are the examples of the uh, electroluminescence material? Electroluminescence devices are fabricated using either the organic or inorganic electroluminescent material that are the semiconductors. So, the active materials are generally semiconductors of the wide enough bandwidth, wide enough bandwidth to allow the exit of the light. So, we use a particular wavelength of that semiconductor so that the it allows to light and to exit the light. So, most typical inorganic thin film uh, is the ZNS MN with the yellow orange emission. So, if we use, use zinc sulfide and manganese then we can get the yellow orange output. So, example of many range of electric materials are we are having the powder zinc sulfide doped with the copper that produce the greenish uh, light. If powder zinc sulfide doped with the silver, it also it produces the bright blue light. Thin film zinc sulfide doped with the manganese that produce the orange red color light. <coughs> so, to, to make it more illuminate. Uh, so, we just dope the light. Naturally blue diamond which includes a trace of boron that acts a, act as a dopant. So, semiconductors containing group third and group 5 elements such as uh, indium phosphide and INP and gallium arsenide that is GAAS and gallium nitride that that are used as a light emitted light emitting diode that we use <coughs> that semiconductor we can use. So, uh, certain organic semiconductor such as ruby R, R U and uh, uh, P V Y uh, we can use that there are the many other organic semiconductor used for the construction of the electrical uh, electroluminescent light. So, light emitting capacitor uh, a uh, we use uh, that there is a light emitting capacitor. So, also electroluminescent light in in operation usually in the 0 0.08 watt to, to add 230 volt uh, means output is uh, the 0 0.08 watt when uh, 230 voltage is applied and day and uh, we can uh, lit diameter of these are 59 millimeter light emitting capacitor of LEC in term used since at least 1961 and describe the electroluminescent panel. So, LEC used in the electroluminescent panel panels for the display devising. So, generally electric has patent during the 1938 that a first patent on the flat electroluminescent panel that are still made as a night lights and back lights for instruments panel displays. So, electroluminescence uh, started in 1938. So, electroluminescent panels are a capacitor where the dielectric between the outside plates is a phosphor that gives off the photon when the capacitor is charged. By making one of the contact, contact transparent, the large area exports that emit the light. So, electroluminescent uh, uh, automob used in the automobile 
instruments as a panel backlighting with each gauze point also an individual light source and that was defined in the 1960 by the imperial passenger in cars and was continued successfully in the several vehicles and that is used nowadays also and this photo uh, luminescence this uh, uh, th these are also used in the night lights so this el night light under the trade of the name panel sent at the roughly the same time that are the instrument panels entered production and these lamps have proven extremely reliable that were used which are the some example have had and these are continuously used from the last 50 years and uh, these are the basically different type of panels are used in the display keyboard interfaces we use this electroluminescent display panel uh, in the display keyboard interfaces and there are the many different type of devices that we can use so display devices basically used for display the output of an electrical signal and that it is in the form of the number it is in form of the text it is in form of the images it is in form of the videos so uh, so display devices are designed in such a mode so that we can view the display uh, we can view the output of a particular signal so we can discuss the purpose of the display technology is to simplify the information sharing that that is a very important so display devices information sharing we will use further we will just define the various other devices used for the display uh, from the electronic circuit thank you very much